there is a hidden history that's been deliberately obfuscated from the peoples of the world, and that's why I am on the trail of a Nephilim. The Genesis 6 narrative states that the Nephilim are on the earth in those days and also afterwards. If that's true, can we find evidence that corroborates this? I'm L.A. Marzulli. Join me as we go on the trail of a Nephilim. Hey folks, uh, your intrepid host, Elia Marzulli here. We're gonna talk about Lovelock Cave. We've talked about this before, but uh, this, this just came in February 4th. Did giant humans once roam the United States? We'll get into this and so much more, but first, a word from our trusted sponsor. If the appearance of wrinkles, fine lines, or other signs of aging on your face and bodies are getting worse, it may be more than just New Year's stress. Your collagen levels may be critically low which is why myself, along with thousands of people, are starting to use multi-collagen to renew and revitalize the way they look and feel. Folks, I take it every morning in my coffee. Multi-collagen is formulated to help reduce visible signs of aging, reduce wrinkles, promote a youthful glow, promote elasticity, and promote skin hydration. You can experience the incredible benefits of multi-collagen at an exclusive 53% discount. Plus, get four free bonuses now by going to www.healthwithla.com. That's www.healthwithla.com. Folks, I take it every morning. Uh, this just came in, um, and it's from Cheryl. And I just want to thank Cheryl for, for writing these kind words. It, it bolsters me. Hello, LA. I so much enjoy your YouTube show. Thank you, Cheryl. I also believe in the pre-tribulation rapture of the church. When I was watching today, Monday, about your teaching on the rapture, you described going up at the rapture and then said, there was a reverential silence that fell over us. Wow, wow, wow. Get this, folks. I knew then that I'd have to tell you the dream of the rapture. I actually had a dream, not a vision like you did, but... I have had visions of my place in heaven where I was actually there. So I know how that feels, just as you described your vision as actually being there and experience. This is supernatural stuff. Some of you are going to frown. Some of you are going to have trouble with this. But we live in a supernatural world. And from time to time, it's all biblical. Um, God does things. He opens our eyes. To, he shows us different things. He takes us places. Think about it. Anyways, my rapture dream goes as follows. I was staring intently out my window, up at the clouds of the night sky. I kept staring at the clouds, and then a form appeared. And then there was Jesus in the clouds, filling up the night sky. A reverential silence fell over the whole earth. No dogs barking, no insects, nothing. There was complete silence and such reverence. So when you said those words, reverential silence, the exact same words that I intensely felt in my dream, chills went all over me. And so I felt I should let you know. I felt that reverential silence, too. Thanks for all you do, L.A. Uh, she then writes, you are a legend. Uh, maybe in my own mind, but uh, thank you. I appreciate the kind words. I really do. And that's from Cheryl. So let's get into uh, this. This, again, is um, it's actually from the Jerusalem Post, which is kind of interesting. And, you know, the giant humans once roamed the United States. Bum, bum, ba. There is a certain debate among scholars regarding the truthfulness of the claims made about the giants of Lovelock Cave. During the initial excavations, remains of two red-haired giants were reported. One was a female measuring 1.98 meters in height, and the other was a male measuring over 2.44 meters. So they're up around seven feet, roughly, right? However, further investigation did not find any evidence to support such claims. In Sarah Winnemucca's Hopkins book, Life Among the Paiutes, their wrongs and claims, she does not mention giants, but refers to what is called barbarians. Research conducted at the University of Nevada suggests that one of the giants found was actually 1.83 meters tall, not the claim 2.44 meters. 
A short time after the second excavation in 1931, an article published in a local newspaper, Nevada Re Review Minor, claimed that two giant skeletons were discovered in the dry lake bed near Lovelock with heights of 2.6 meters. So now you're looking at like basically eight, nine feet, and then three meters, which is a nine footer. And they had been buried in a similar manner to the way it was done in ancient Egypt. Despite all this sounding absurd, the legend of these strange people spread throughout the Americas. For example, in the 16th century, a Spanish conquistador named Pedro Cieza de Leon documented an ancient Peruvian story about the origin of the giants. In his writings, de Leon wrote that the figures came by sea huh, on rafts made of reeds. Wow. Like large boats, and that some of the men were so tall that an average man would only go as high as their knees. Furthermore, uh, further north in the uh, Andean mountains between Peru and Bolivia, elongated skulls were found. The remains are about 3,000 years old and much larger than those of regular humans. Some of them also had red hair. So it goes on from there, but let's, let's sort of get into this. First of all, the boat made of reeds. If you go online, you can check out Thor Heyerdahl, right, who made a, papyr a reed boat and then left basically from the Strait of Gibraltar and went and traveled on that boat and wound up in the New World. Without a map, without a compass, he just put up the sail and off he went. So what are we to believe? There were giants here. Um, but the reason why it's been deliberately obfuscated, because it points back to the supernatural worldview. It points back to the biblical narrative about the Nephilim. It points back to Genesis 3.15, i.e. the seed war. The seed of a dragon will be at war at enmity with the seed of the woman. For the life of me, I don't understand why, well, I do understand. The reason why it's kept under the radar, the reason why it's deliberately obfuscated, the reason why people are threatened is because it points back to the validity and the veracity of the biblical prophetic narrative. And the powers that be do not want that. I've been to the Lovelock Cave. I was there a while back uh, with the late uh, Joe Taylor. Uh, it, was, it was great to be with him, also Ron Moorhead. And there was, and I think I've talked about this before, but I'll just reiterate it again. On the wall of the cave, there was this black hand. No one knows who put it there, but it was like two or three times my size. And when we got to the cave, about a month after it was reported that that black hand was there, it was gone. It was like the BLM or whoever came into the cave and erased any sign of it. Why would they do that? Why would anybody do that? Why not study it? Why not, why not figure out what was it made of? How was this, you know, uh, projected onto the rock? Was it paint? Was it ash? Or was it something else? The cave is sealed up. So the trail is, is very cold at this point, um, almost 100 years old. And, and both, both um, okay, so you go into the entrance of the cave. To your left and to your right, there were tunnels. And that's where they did the digs. And that's allegedly where they found the giant skeletons. Um, I had a, a book. Actually, Mondo's got the book now. He, someone gave it to him. But I, I had the same book. It was from UCLA, I believe. And it cost me about 120 bucks. And it's, it's just one of those academic books that um, basically are out of print. You've got to really hunt for them. But it talked about uh, the Paiute and, and what happened at Lovelock. And it showed some of the skeletons and all this other stuff. Uh, one more one more point of interest. Years ago, there was uh, uh, two gentlemen who contacted me about uh, a very large skeleton that was on display in Virginia City. So at the time, a friend of mine, who was still a private detective, um, I gave him the address. He went in. He got the name uh, and the phone number of the person who owned the property. I cold called this guy, just cold called him. And I said, look, you don't know me from Adam. I'm a researcher, I'm a filmmaker. I write books about the Nephilim. If you have a giant in your museum, because the, the museum was shut down, so it wasn't open to the public, but at the time, decades before it had been a museum and it hadn't been opened up in years. So the guy calls me back or answers me and, and we have this conversation and I fly in to Virginia City and I go to this nondescript building and I walk in. I was immediately blown away. There was this huge stuffed eagle, like, I mean, like really, really big. 
it was there, and as well as other artifacts. And I began to say, well, can we look at the skeleton? He goes, sure. So we go down this flight of stairs, and it goes down, 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 down. And there's like lights that are there, but they're on strings. And there's a corridor with these huge timbers, huge posts. And the ceilings are 10, 12 feet tall, at least. And there's like a, a, um, a plank, a, a gang, um, a, a walkway. And there are stalls and there is ancient farm machinery and stacks of old newspaper and piles of old tools. I mean, it was like, what is this? And we go to the end of that hall. There's something out of Goonies, really. There's a wood plank walkway. That's what I wanted to say. And um, we get to the end of the walkway. And at this point, I'm getting a little nervous. And I'm wondering, you know, is something not good going to happen here? Uh, why am I down here? What's going on? I said, well, where is it? And the man goes, it's over there. And there was a ladder. And you remember this, we're down on the ground floor. There are huge posts which go up into the hole, holding up the ceiling, the floor above us. These posts had to have been 12 to 16 feet anyway, at least 12 feet tall. They were really big and they were, this is ancient construction. I'm in the bowels of this building. I don't know how old it is, but it's really old. And we, um, the man goes, it's on that ladder, go up the ladder, slide the door over, and you'll see it. So I'm going, okay, and I get on the ladder, I climb up the ladder, I slide the door back, and there in front of me is a skeleton, okay? But the skeleton is of a Native American. It was at one time a museum piece. How do I know that? Because the bones were numbered uh, in red, like a red magic mark of it, very, very fine. Um, it was laid out at a display. Above it was this glass. And apparently, and this is this according to other people that have written into me and talked about this, when the museum was open, you would stand above and look down through the glass at the skeleton. Well, here's what happened. The, the glass would distort the image and make it look like a giant. It was about a five foot six to five foot eight Native American. Um, I have pictures of that. I will not show them uh, out of respect because this is First Nation people, it's somebody's uncle, it's somebody's grandfather. And, I, and I, when I got off the ladder, um, I told him, I said, you know, you need, to, you need to repatriate this. You need to just bury it. You know, what, what are you gonna do with this? So that's it. So that also came allegedly from in and around the Lovelock Cave. The legend persists. We'll probably never get to the bottom of it. We will never know the truth. But we know that Sarah Winnemucca talked about the red-haired giants, allegedly with six fingers, double rows of teeth. Um, the paper says they were barbarians, not giants. Not so fast, citizen. That's not the story I'm familiar with. I've seen, before they switched the curator of the museum, the old curator of the museum at Lovelock actually had the skulls on display. The pictures of those skulls are right here on the Trail of a Nephilim. You can go and check that out for yourself, lamarzilli.net. But it was Aaron Judkins, the archaeologist, who gave me uh, those pictures, and they are included in On the Trail. So that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Um, by the way, I will be at the Property Watchers Conference at the end of the month. I'll be speaking twice, definitely about the Roswell uh, connection, Roswell 1 and Roswell 2. I may circle back and do Days of Chaos. Why? Because we are living in the Days of Chaos. And this book was published in 2015. I will probably do an update on what's going on, but... This is a great book. It's a good primer. And if you don't know about end times, check this out. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, folks, there is a hidden history that's been deliberately obfuscated from the peoples of the world, and that's why I am on the trail of the Nephilim.